Toyota Racing Series. The 86s are out there. It's their second race of the weekend. And Alex Davison's with me. Aaron Seaton crossed the line to win race one earlier today. He will start further back. We'll explain that to you very shortly. But the cars are on track. This is going to be a good race. There are, we can expect nothing but massive amount of action in this race. There have uh, been such good races to watch over the first three Toyota 86 Racing Series events and the first race here this weekend. Earlier today was uh, amazing to watch. Will Brown is lining up at the final corner as the cars line up. And the Toyota 86s are rolling up to grid positions to line up for their second race of the weekend. Aaron Seaton crossed the line to win the first race earlier today, but was given a five-second post-race penalty for a restart infringement. And that's moved him further back in the pack, Alex Davison, so he is going to have to start from position eight. That gives Will Brown, the series leader, the win from the first race and pole position for this one. Yeah, championship leader Brown, he'll, uh, although he would, you know, you always want to win a race by crossing the, the, the finish line first, he'll take that any way he can get it, and that's great for his points lead. But a uh, costly mistake from young Aaron and him and his dad Glenn are actually lining up eighth and ninth on the grid here. So we're going to see a inter and family battle here in this race. So it's Will Brown and David Cedars who will start on the front row. Dylan Golson and Ben Grice to start from row two. Cam Hill, Stephen Johnson, one of three invited drivers in the field this weekend. Ash Blewett there, car 86. He is the New Zealand Toyota 86 Racing Series champion. He's come across to have a run with us at Bathurst this weekend. Leanne Tander is back in the field. A field of 39 for this category's first appearance at Mount Panorama. It's the fourth <coughs> event of this year's inaugural series. It's race 11. There's 100 points on the line. Will Brown is on pole position alongside him. David Cedars, green flag at the back. Let's let them loose. The sporty, swift, 86ers at Mount Panorama. Pit straight is for them. The mountain is about to receive them at the top. And it's David Cedars who's made a great jump down the outside to turn one. We jump on board with Stephen Johnson. And Cedars comfortably leads at the first corner. Oh, and Ben Grice very sideways just as we go out of shot here. So I'm hoping he held oh, onto it. But no, out on the grass. So Benny Grice, who's been charging through the field already this, in the early race today, has got a lot of work to do. Out on the grass, not making speed. This long haul up Mountain Straight. And already Cedars is being challenged and passed for the lead. He had a margin on the exit of turn one, but strange. Will Brown's just blowing him away. Dylan Golson's going really brave around the outside. And Griffin's Ben Cam Hill is next. That's Aaron Seaton running right out towards the wall as they climb towards the cutting on the first of six laps. So Aaron Seaton climbing from eighth on the grid up to fifth already, just with after two corners so he's charging already um, two things which are a little bit strange cedars and brown side by side off the line and cedars led comfortably into turn one and then the same thing happened in reverse so maybe he missed a gear or maybe just kicked slipstream from will brown to get the lead will brown's been racing open wheelers this year he's been in formula ford and formula four in recent times and he's been starting to clock up a few wins in the toyota 86s first time across the top of mount panorama these little cars are perfectly suited. Look at them sliding as they make their way across McPhillamy Park. Will Brown with a margin. Then it's Cedars as they drop off the top of Skyline. Dylan Golson from here in Bathurst. He's on his home track and he's fighting with guys who have been really fast in the first few rounds of this series. They tumble on down and try to separate this field is tricky. For Will Brown to have that margin after losing the jump is quite amazing. And, uh, and really gained all that time over the top of the mountain so lots of confidence there he's really uh making up a lot of time on cold tires so will brown purple sectors as you'd expect as he's pulled that lead out to nearly a second on the opening lap david cedars was really loose over the top of the hill on this first lap he was four wheel drifting his car over lukey heights and skyline so not lukey heights what am i talking about I'm the wrong racetrack <laughs> mcphillamy park have a look at this aaron cedars tucked johnson. in the slipstream of stephen johnson cam hill in front is Oh, he's poking it down the inside on Dylan Gulson, who gives him some road to play with Good because job. he knows that he's going to be able to hang on to the exit. It slows Hill down. It brings Johnson in. It brings Seaton in. And that's the thing about these cars. They don't have massive amounts of power. About 180 kilowatts. It's more than enough to have a good race, as now Hill will hang on from Stephen Johnson. 
but if you lose the momentum and someone gets you, chances are two or three more will be right on your back bumper bar. Yeah, good battle there. I thought Stevie was going to get the uh, Whoa, get the cut boy. back. Cameron Crick defending from Ash Blewett. They're all the way to the pit wall. That was brave. And Glenn Seaton and McCorkendale side by side into turn one as well. So there's racing going on right through the field. But uh, I saw Stephen Johnson after the first race today and he just said he was struggling a little bit, you know, going up the hill and, and out of the corners. He thinks just being a bigger guy might have been hurting him a little bit. And you can see that with a good run. He didn't quite have the momentum to go with Cam Hill. But Brown still holding a nice lead there. And that's Dylan Golson. Yeah, but Dylan Golson has just swept around. Oh, I missed that. Well David Seed is just there at Griffin's Bend on the climb. The 24-year-old from here in Bathurst. He's actually a journalism student. Like, seriously, about 500 metres down the road at Charles Sturt University. Been doing some cheeky testing at night, maybe, all, throughout the year. All at legal road <laughs> speed, Alex. Yeah, of course. Look at this screaming pack. No one really gets away. Now, this might show us a bit more of the start. Cedars did nail the jump really well there from Will Brown. The rest are away well. It's three wide in the middle of the pack. In the run-up to Turn 1, something happened, which we sort of didn't see where uh, Cedars really got an advantage. Stevie Johnson here right up behind Ben Grice. We're going to see what happens to Grice. He gets very sideways about now. He's rushed it around the outside oh, there and no. just gone in too hot. So did that one all on his own. Steve Johnson said thank you very much. Here it is again from another angle. And he is, he's got rolling again, but he's back to position 23. You can see his brake lights went out and he's just tried to carry that extra corner speed to get around the outside. Lucky not to hit the wall. They're very close. And uh, he's currently in. Where is he? He'll be charging no matter what he's P23, P23. I think he's he was as low as... Yeah, he was as low as 27th place. So P23. Now, Will Brown has skipped away. 1.2 seconds, and now the slipstream weaving begins. Dylan Gulson wants to break the toe. Cedar's getting a big toe. Let's see if he can do anything with it. He's right behind Gulson coming into the chase. He'll definitely have a go. Couldn't be any closer, but Gulson strong on the brakes. Dave Cedar's not able to outbreak him. Cam Hill right in there as well. And Cam Hill is the reigning Formula 4 National Series winner. He was the early season pace setter in the Toyota 86. I think from memory, he won the first five races in a row before Will Brown stopped him in his tracks at City Motorsport Park. And that's the great thing about this series. They're getting to race on some of the most famous tracks in the country. Here's Ben Grice on the fight back Ooh. trail. A little bit of a rub with Leanne Tander. He gets down the inside of Trent Grubel as well sideways on the pit straight. It's all going on. He's always sideways, Ben Grice, but it's working for him. Obviously got that car set up to be quite loose and uh, very edgy. Leanne Tander up to 21st, so she's slowly working her way through the field, and Adam Gowan's just making up a spot there too. He's had a tough weekend as well, hasn't he? Yeah, he has, but he's on his way forward in that number 11 Valvoline car. Here's Cam Hill and Dave Cedars arguing over third spot. Hills around the outside, not generally where you want to be here, and he's going to have to let Cedars back through. No, that outside move doesn't work very well. There's no grip when you're outside of that bowl. We often see people try and go around the outside and disappear off into the boonies. So it's Will Brown who leads the way at Bathurst, halfway distance, approaching here with the Toyota 86s on the mountain. Problems here for Drew Ridge on the exit of the chase, has had an off and hasn't been able to get the number four car running. This is one of the multiple entries from the Brian Hinton Motorsport team. The Lexus safety car is on standby. The pit exit, the leaders are at the top of the mountain. Will Brown the leader. Dylan Golson, though, has closed the margin. This is a great fight for third spot. David Cedars has got it. Stephen Johnson would like it. And we are riding on board with the number 17 as it heads down to Forrest's elbow. Great shot down, Conrod straight, some yellow flags there waving for Jared Maggs' car that's parked off to our right of screen. Drivers left, fight here for third between David Cedars and Stephen Johnson, but Alex, Dylan Golson's going hunting here. He is hunting down the series leader. Dylan Golson has really pulled in Will Brown, and those two guys have got a bit of a break and cleared David Cedars and Steve Johnson. Cedars sort of falling back into Stephen Johnson's eyesight's now and Steve's really putting on pressure and trying to get past. He's really challenged him a few times over the last lap or two. 
Cedars will cover on the run down to Murray's corner. So Stephen wants to get on the throttle early and try to race him up towards Hell Corner. And he's got a pretty good run out of there. He's not going to be close enough to have a look at turn one. Oh, he needs to cover because Aaron Cedars is coming. He's trying to pounce on him. The guy who crossed the line first in the earlier race today but was penalised five seconds for a restart infringement. He's trying to make up some ground. So while Stephen Johnson was worrying about a move on Cedars, he was being attacked from behind by not just one or two, there's three of them. Oh, it's gone from Gross. bad to worse for Ben Grice, who has returned to pit lane. So that's a real shame for him. Right. Top two have cleared away here. The third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, they're all together. What a battle. Steve Johnson, one minute he's attacking Dave Cedars for third. Next minute he's on the defence and Cam Hill gets up the inside of Aaron Seaton there. So it's all going on behind Steve Johnson. He just wants to keep his eyes forward and uh, try and get past Dave Cedars. But he's also got to keep an eye on the guys behind him as well. You need eyes in the back of your head to know what's going on here because they're coming from everywhere. Top two are clearing away while these guys are all fighting amongst themselves. Replay here on Conrod Strait. And this was Jared Maggs' car. Ooh. He bumped the fence there. Just hard to see behind the bridge. He's already but got some damage from the yeah. impact somewhere. You can see he's damaged the suspension on his car. It's all over the place. Back of shot. Now, this is how Drew Rich has ended up off the road in... Uh, the yellow and Ooh, black car, he's, and he's actually gone in driver's side. Yeah, so he's tangled with someone, obviously, exiting the chase. I reckon this may tell us more. Oh, this is Ben Grice, Grice exiting the elbow oh. and damage too. So, trying to recover from a bad start, and he's in trouble. Gee, they're dropping like flies. Now, Kane Baxter Smith is in drama. That's on the run up towards the cutting. He's parked in Glenn Seaton's car park from <laughs> 95. <laughs> How good are your stats? You know exactly what year it is straight away. I'm always impressed, Glenn. Oh, stop it. <laughs> Top two have got away here. Now, uh, Glenn Seaton is in this race. He's got onto the back of this queue of cars. There's about six of them in it. He sits position 10. We're on board with Stephen Johnson. There's Glenn, just top left of shot, the silver and black. He's one of our three invited drivers. Here he is. It's that famous open face helmet. He's not chewing the drink straw today, though. The races aren't long have, enough. You might have taken your advice and installed it for this race. Stevie Johnson having a look up the inside. But Cedar's too good on the brakes. Lee misses the apex a little bit, though. So he's, he is looking in the mirrors and feeling the pressure from Stevie. Stevie will just need a hint. He's pretty close now. He is close enough to have a go here. But Cedar's is covering. And no Stephen, down the inside. Ideally, Stephen wants to be out wide here to get the run on him up towards the next corner, which he's, he's going to do, but it's going to leave him vulnerable to whoever's behind because they'll do the same thing. So Good Cedars job, could Steve be hung Johnson. out. He could be hung out to dry here because Cam Hill is going with Stephen Johnson. Absolutely. Aaron Seaton's going to put his nose in here in a second. Cedars is going to go around the outside. Oh. There's a bump with Cam Hill. On the way up the mountain, Tim Brook now pops out of the slipstream. It is on up mountain straight. This is great. Oh, no. Car off the road. This is Daniel Rainui in car 77. I reckon that's the chase by the looks of things. Last lap, leaders are clear. Will Brown still leads from Dylan Golson. Stephen Johnson is breathing a sigh of relief because he's left David Cedars to deal with the rest of them. But they're still right with him, so he's got to keep his eyes forward and try and break these guys over the top of the over the top of the mountain because the last thing he wants is to have David Cedars within slipstreaming distance going down Comrade Strait on the last lap. Johnson tipping it in at the leader as the leader of this pack, tipping it into the cutting. Nose to tail, this whole group of cars. There's ten of there's probably ten of them in a nice long line there. Oh Whoa. boy, heavy collision there. That's Chris and Manley and Rainui. Very lucky not to tip it over in the gravel. Yeah, as that well. car was up on its side, so. The gravel trap has done its job. Back to the top of the mountain. The fight for the last spot on the podium is on. Well, actually, the fight for third to about 13th is on in the one spot. <laughs> but Johnson has got it at the moment. He's the only invited driver this year who's been able to get in front of the series regulars and grab a podium position. He did that at Sandown a couple of weeks ago down in Melbourne. And he's calling on all of his experience. He's been coming here since the mid-90s. 21 starts in the 1,000. Remember, on the podium here with Will Davison back in 2007. There's the top two, but here's the fight for third. And Cedars is much closer than Stephen Johnson will be comfortable with. This Will. is Will Brown, our leader. Oh, 
drifting it in. Oh, Scandinavian boy. flicking it into Forest Elbow. I haven't seen that before, but he got the apex and held onto it very well. But here we go. Steve Johnson in the mirrors, looking which way Dave Cedars is going to go. Right in the slipstream. Cedars has pulled out. But double, yellow flags. Yeah, double yellow wave flags. yellows. No pass here. No pass will so be on here. He wasn't really watching the flags. No, then, so Cedars that's going to be an issue. Yeah, that's a massive issue. You cannot pass under yellow flags. And Steve Johnson knew that. He's backing off and letting him pass again. It looks like he is, but he's still gone and committed the crime. But now Hill's going to get a lunge. Oh, Hill's going no. to go down the inside of all of them. Back at the front, Will Brown will extend his margin in the series. Dylan Gulson, beautiful drive for second spot. Cam Hill's pounce right at the end to grab third amid a whole pile of flurry of cars, yellow flags, cars on the side of the road, all sorts of stuff going on. My brain's Un hurting. A little bit unfair for Steve Johnson because he, he saw the yellow flags and took his normal racing line and obviously wasn't expecting to get overtaken. And then in all the kerfuffle, ended up losing um, two spots. This is another angle of Daniel Rainui, who was up on his side, this lucky was... to got not to go over, Ooh. and then lucky not to go over when he got to the gravel trap. Oh, boy, he's gone for at least 50 metres on two wheels. That was amazing. I haven't seen that before. It was like an open-wheeler accident, but luckily he kept it kept the black things facing downwards shiny side up still so i'm sure they'll be able to get that one tidied up for the next race and he ends it's, up uh, left it. rear look the yeah no buckled. tire on that rim and it looks like it might even have some suspension damage as well but it's not surprising with the car flying through the air for 50 meters so nice low center of gravity kept that thing on its four wheels in the gravel trap ah uh, but it's 100 series points though to will brown dylan gulson well done second spot cam hill Mr. Opportunity grabbing third there from Dave Cedars and Steve Johnson. Tim Brook was next. And rounding out the 10 was Glenn Seaton as we go back to Josh Hunter rounding out the 20. Field of 39 Toyota 86s. Stunning race. Really thoroughly enjoyed that. Lachlan Deagle back there in position 30. And a couple of non-finishers. Some tough luck for Ben Grice and Drew Ridge.